Okay, so at this point, you should have made your way through um, the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 PDFs and slide decks. And you should now have a pretty good grasp of the fundamental principles of fat loss nutrition, as well as how to structure your diet on both a macro and a micro level. And you've undoubtedly also gained some knowledge um, you know, regarding other topics related to dieting and, and, and the process of losing fat. Okay, so now what I want to do is take a lot of that information that was covered in the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 uh, PDFs and slide decks and practically apply it in a real world setting. So in, in this video, I'm going to take you through a full day of my own eating. Okay, and th again, this is going to bridge the gap between theory and application. All right, I'm going to take you the exact, through the exact same process that I recommended in the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 PDFs and slide decks. Okay, I do the exact same thing personally that I advise you to do. Okay, so I will take you through four meals, um, and I typically eat four meals a day, and I, I generally advise 95% of people to eat three to four meals a day, uh, similar in protein and calories, spaced roughly three to five hours apart, okay? I'm not a fan of eating multiple smaller meals throughout the day. I'm not a fan of snacks, um, et cetera. So, you know, I, I, I wanna see you do the same. Three to four meals, similar in protein and calories, spaced roughly evenly throughout the day. Now, obviously, sometimes that's not gonna be possible and you're gonna have to pivot, um, et cetera. But generally speaking, that's what you wanna be striving for, okay? so. I'm gonna take you through four meals. Um, sorry, my computer went, went black. I'm gonna take you through four meals. This is very typical of what I do every day, all right? That said, keep in mind, the amounts of foods that I'm going to, sh to, to show here, the overall calories, the overall macronutrients, those are suitable and specific to me and my goals, okay? you are going to receive your own custom set uh, of calorie and protein goals. Okay, so I tell you this because I don't want you to go to try and mimic what I do here in terms of the amounts. Definitely some of the meals I'm going to show you, you can, you, can, you can incorporate and then adjust the amounts to suit, to, to suit your own uh, calorie and protein needs. That Again, I will, I will um, provide those guidelines to you. But don't try to do what I'm going to show you in the exact amount shown because they're likely not going to be uh, anywhere near appropriate for you. So I just wanted to clear that up. I just want to take you through the process that you should be going through that I recommend and that you already read about in the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 PDS. Okay, so um, we'll get into it. I'm going to start with, uh, with, with meal one. I'll take you through the exact process. Uh, and I'll do the same for, for meals two, three, and four. I'm going to show you how to track your food, measure your food, quantify your food, how to use the MyFitnessPal Nutrition app, all that stuff. Okay, so let's get into meal one. Okay, so meal one. So again, in the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 PDFs and slide decks, I told you and I, you know, I, I um, outlined the process that you need to go through at each one of your meals. Okay, so... Quick review, it's what's my protein source for the meal, what's my carbohydrate source for the meal, what's my fat source for the meal, if there is one, um, what am I going to season uh, the meal with in terms of spices and rubs, um, things of that nature, and then what low or no calorie condiment or sauce or add-on add -on am, am I going to use to kind of jazz and, and, and flavor the meal up a bit, okay? You will see I go through that exact same process in all of these meals that I'm going to present to you. Okay, so real quick, just for context, again, I told you before that this isn't appropriate for you necessarily, uh, or more than likely it's not appropriate for you, but just for context to try to bring you know the whole puzzle together. I am currently, I just started a fat loss phase. It'll be eight weeks. Okay, so my calorie needs... In this, in this cut, this fat loss phase, or it's gonna be about 2,000 on average per day, um, maybe a little bit higher on the weekends, but my target, just um, you know, for sake of simplicity, is about 2,000 per day. 
My protein uh, goal is going to be, I'm currently about 213 pounds. So my protein goal is going to be in that 210 to 220 range, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, more likely higher um, on average. So again, as I told you, the only two things you really need to be worrying about uh, are number one, your overall calories, okay, and then also um, secondarily meeting your protein goal within a range. And again, I will, I will provide you both your own calorie target and your own protein target, okay? So... Let's start with meal one here. Sorry, my computer keeps blacking out. So let's start with meal one. What is my protein source for this meal? Okay, very basic. I have uh, some boar's head basic deli turkey breast. Okay, so this is going to be my protein source for this meal. All right, so what I'm going to do, I am going to get in my fitness pal and search for boar's head turkey. Now, truth be told, I already have this in my, 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 my fitness pal because I eat a lot, it's already in my database, but I just want to take you through the process. And here it is right here. Uh, it's a verified entry with a green shield. You always want to look for the green shield if you're searching the My Fitness Pal database. Uh, I'm going to adjust the amounts to 200 grams, okay, because that's that's going to be enough protein for me, okay. You, you likely would not need 200 grams, all right. Um, I'm going to select meal one. I'm going to log it, okay. So that's logged in there now. Now I'm going to weigh it out on a food scale. So I got digital food scale. I'm going to turn it on, and I am literally just going to put the turkey on there until it reads 200 grams. So right there is 114. I got another pack I'm trying to use this up. Believe it or not, that's exactly 200 grams of uh, turkey breast. Okay, so that's perfect. So I have my protein source for this meal out of the way. All right. Now, once we get the protein established and we get that in the right amount for our protein goals, okay, we're going to move on to what's my carb source for the meal, for the meal, my carbohydrate source. In this case, I'm keeping it real simple. Um, I have some low calorie, higher fiber bread. All right. So I'm just going to make a sandwich. Sandwiches are great, by the way. They're, they, you, you, can, you can make a very nutrient-dense, high-protein, moderate-calorie sandwich that's going to that gonna help fill you up. Okay, the, the sandwiches are great. Anyway, so my carb source for the meal is just bread. Okay, so what I'm going to do, actually, I don't have this in my current MyFitnessPal database, so I'm going to just scan a barcode here. Uh, barcode's on the back. I'm going to hit bring up the barcode scanner. It recognizes it immediately. I'm going to make two sandwiches here. So I'm going to change the amount to four slices. I'm going to hit the check. And again, we're all logged in. Okay. At this point, I am at um, 47 grams of protein um, and about 385 calories. So I'm target because my calorie goals right now, my calorie goal right now is about 2,000 per day. I'm going to try to shoot for like four or 500 calorie meals. All right. So I got roughly about hundred calories left. So I got the protein source figured out in the right amount. I've moved my carb source. I've got that sorted out. Now we're going to move to what is the dietary fat source for this meal. And I don't always use a direct dietary fat source. Um, in this case I am, but you typically can get enough dietary fat just through the trace fats in, in protein and carbohydrates. Uh, you can get enough dietary fat for hormonal uh, support. And that way, because dietary fat sources are so energy dense and you get a very small amount of it for the calories, that way you can, you can build more satiating um, meals that are, gonna, that are gonna help manage hunger better. You're gonna get more food 
for the same calories versus if you add in a, a, a lot of dietary fat, okay? But in this case, I am gonna use a dietary fat source. And that is going to be, I have some, again, Boar's Head brand uh, Colby Jack cheese, okay? That does not have a barcode on it, so I'm just going to search again in the MyFitnessPal database. Boar's Head, not Boat's Head, Boar's Head, Colby Jack. And it comes right up, okay? And I'm just going, now I'm going to put it on a food scale and see what this slice is. Okay, I kind of, kind of already know what it is because I do this a lot. But I'm going to take the turkey off first. Food scale's back on. That is 32 grams of Colby Jack cheese. So now I already have this into my fitness pal. I'm going to change the serving size to grams from ounces. I'm going to type in 32 grams. It's 124 calories. I'm going to hit the check mark. And you know that that that's meal one. Okay. That entire meal is uh, 508 calories and 54 grams of protein. All right. Now, so again, what's my protein source? You get that sorted out first in the right amount for your protein needs, which I will set for you. What's my carb source? You get that sorted out, okay? Then you move to what's my direct dietary fat source, if there is one, okay? Um, and then you say, okay, well, what am I gonna season the meal with? What low or no calorie um, sauce or condiment am I going to use to kind of flavor it up a little bit? So let's move to that next. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to put uh, spices or, or rubs or seasonings on my turkey, um, but I am going to use a condiment. Okay, basic good old fashioned yellow mustard. All right, uh, this stuff has no calories in it, so I don't have to worry about logging it. All right, so again, I'm not gonna take you through the process of making a sandwich, but I would, again, four pieces of this bread, I put it on a plate, I distribute the turkey evenly. I'm probably gonna break that cheese slice in half and put half on each sandwich, and I put some mustard on it, okay, that's it. So again, we're thinking in terms of meal components and not these elaborate 50 ingredient recipes that has, no one has the frigging time to make. Okay, simple, uniform, basic meals, okay, with mostly single ingredient, dominant sources of a specific macronutrient. So again, what's my protein? What's my carb? What's my fat? What am I going to season it with? What no or low calorie add-on or condiment am I going to use? That's the process that you're going to go through every time you eat. Now, obviously, life circumstances may not allow you to, to do that all the time, and then you're going to have to pivot, and I'll teach you how to do that too. Um, but ideally, this is, this is the process. It's that easy. So again, meal components, protein, carb, fat. How am I going to jazz it up? How am I going to flavor it? All right? It's that easy. Okay? So that's meal one. I have it all logged into my fitness pal. All right. And um, so I'll be back here uh, later on with meal two. Take you through that. And uh, by the time you get through this, guys, you're going to you're going to understand exactly how to do this stuff and have the skills and the tactics that you need to see um, and, and to learn and develop. OK, to succeed with this, it, you, as you can see, it's really not that difficult. And I'm going to show you a lot of, you know, three other totally different kinds of meals where things the tracking gets a little bit more in the weeds. Um, so I'll show you that as well. But yeah, this is basically the entire process. So I'll be back with meal two here shortly. OK, we're back for meal two. Um, before I get into meal two and I go off on tangents a lot, so you're going to have to bear with me. I want to go back to meal one. Um, and talk about the bread that I used. And the reason I want to discuss that is because, guys, not everything you eat has to be weighed and measured on a food scale in grams or ounces. Okay, so for like the bread, again, it was 
it was this bread. I didn't get this out and put an individual slice on a food scale and weigh it out and look at, you know, what the bread, what the slice of bread weighed in grams. Okay, um, for things like um, bread that's that comes in in you know in, in a in a sleeve that has a label on it, I just scan the barcode on it and adjust the, the you know the amount that I'm eating. One slice is two slices, four slices, whatever. Okay, I don't weigh it out and be like, oh, well, it says it's 28 grams a slice and the, and the slice is 30 grams. I got to peel off a little bit. No, you don't have to do that. Now, if I bought like fresh bread from a bakery that didn't have a nutritional, nutrition label on it, <clears throat> I'd probably cut off a slice from the loaf. And let's say I bought a thing of sourdough bread or something like that that didn't have a label. I might cut off a slice, look up sourdough bread in my fitness pal. Uh, and then put the slice on the food scale and, um, you know, weigh, weigh it out and then just change the amount in grams in my fitness pal. I would do that in that situation. But if I'm buying branded uh, bread in a sleeve that has a label on it, I'm not doing it. Same thing can be said um, for things like protein bars. I'm not weighing this out on a food scale. I'm scanning the barcode on the label. Um, I'm scanning the barcode on the label and I'm just, if I have one of them, I'm gonna just type in one, um, submit it, or if I have two of them, which I never would, but uh, for, the, for the sake of example, I adjust it to two. I'm not actually looking at the label on this and saying, oh, well, the bar is 60 grams. I'm gonna put it on the food scale and see if it really weighs 60 grams. I'm, you're, you don't have to go to that, that, that length, okay? Um, so, same thing. Um, individual containers of like Greek yogurt. I'm not scooping out the Greek yogurt from this container and putting it in a, you know, in a bowl on a food scale and, and you, know, look, you know, weighing it out in grams that way. I'm scanning the barcode. You know, if it says it's 90 calories for a container, I'm trusting that it's, it's pretty close, right? I'm not, I'm not doing that. Now, if I bought a big tub of Greek yogurt, which I sometimes do, then I would actually you know, put a bowl on a food scale and, and divvy out and dollop out the Greek yogurt and get the grams to where I wanted it. But not if I'm buying like a six pack of these things. I'm just scanning the barcode. If I'm having one of them, I'm typing in one. If I have two of them, I type in two. My fitness pal adjusts all the calories and macros and I'm going with that. Um, didn't really plan on going off on a tangent on, on what to track and what uh, what to weigh and what to weigh and measure what to weigh and measure and not weigh and measure. But here, here we go. Like I said, I go off on tangents. Same thing with like this stuff. These tortillas. I'm not weighing out these tortillas on a food scale. I'm scanning the barcode. Um, you know, opening my Fitness Pal, uh, scanning the barcode on it. If I'm having one tortilla, I'm typing in one and hitting submit. If I'm having two, I'm typing in two and hitting submit. I'm not physically looking at, you know, the label and saying, well, this tortilla is 45 grams and I have to get exactly 45 grams of tortilla. I'm not doing that. All right, so I just want to clear that up. Clear that up. Some things you definitely need to measure on a food scale, uh, but other things like this, like some of these examples, you don't have to. Just scan the barcode, adjust the, the, adjust the amount uh, or the, the number that you're eating. It, it, it just, it's that simple. One more example, if you buy like a, a package of like like craft singles, craft singles like cheese slices, and it they're pre, you know, they're 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 individual slices that are they're wrapped individually, you don't have to weigh that out. Just scan the barcode. If you're having one slice, type in one. If you're having two slices, type in two. All right. Um, so uh, now like shredded cheddar cheese, that's a different story. That that I am weighing out on a food scale, okay? So there's nuances of this, but I don't want you to be under the impression that you have to weigh and measure everything you eat on a food scale. Some stuff you don't need to, okay? Some stuff you definitely do. Um, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that uh, as we go along our journey here. Uh, so anyway, that's out of the way. Just want to clear that up. Um, so we're going to get into meal two. And again, we're going through the same process, all right? What's my protein source for this meal? We start there, we get that established. In this case, this meal, I have some um, just boneless, skinless chicken breast 
uh, cutlets thin sliced. I bought these at a market um, and this did not have a food label on it. Um, oftentimes the, the meat uh, and poultry that I buy is branded and it does have a food label on it. This stuff didn't. Um, so all I'm going to do here is, if I can find my phone, I'm going to get out my fitness pal and I'm going to type in boneless, skinless, chicken breast. Okay, it comes right up. Uh, you'll, you'll see a ton of entries for this. Uh, you'll see a ton of entries for this. Um, you're always going to look for one with a green uh, verified check mark. Okay, so I'm going to bring that one up now. I'm going to get my chicken out. I'm weighing this out raw. Okay, weighing it out raw. Um, another quick tangent. If you buy food uh, with a label on it, a nutrition label on it, the nutrition label reflects the state of the food that that you bought it in okay so if you buy a package of like grilled chicken breast like this um, and it's you know it's a it's a branded it's a it's a branded um, chicken breast like Tyson or simple truth or Holt 365 whatever it is and it has a label on it and it's it comes raw the nutrition label is for raw chicken breast it is not for cooked chicken chicken breast okay so just remember that Nutrition labels reflect the state of the, of the food that you bought it in. All right, if you buy a bag of frozen raspberries, the nutrition label on that bag is for frozen raspberries. Um, another example, if you buy uh, a container of liquid egg whites, okay, the nutrition label uh, is for wet liquid egg whites, not cooked egg whites. Okay, so you need to be aware of that kind of stuff. If you buy pre-cooked, um, like grilled chicken strips, those are popular now. The nutrition label is for cooked chicken. Okay, so again, the nutrition label reflects the state of the food that you bought it in. Okay, just always remember that. So again, this stuff did not have a nutrition label. I looked it up in my fitness pal. It's, it's raw. Um, and I also, um, when I searched for it, um, I, I specified boneless, skinless, uh, chicken breast raw. Okay. So again, I'm going to want about 200 grams of this, not saying that that's appropriate for you. I said that in, in, you know, in the opening of this video, but that's what I'm shooting for here. Okay, so we're at 87. I'm going to add some more. 139. 184. And I'm just going to tear a little piece off here. 191. Sometimes you have to do this. Good. It puts me right at 200. Okay. I'll rinse my hands off. Okay, so now I have my protein source established, all right? Um, and just like in meal one, once we get that knocked out and in the right amount for our protein needs, uh, we'll move on to our carb source. So real quick, I'm air frying this chicken. So I'm gonna dump this in the air fryer. All right, that'll take about 10 minutes to cook. Um, so we move to our carb source. The carb source for this meal, good old fashioned white rice. So I'm just making a chicken, a chicken and rice bowl. Typical fitness type of meal, chicken and rice, right? It's, it's, a, it's a go to of mine. You can make it a lot of different ways. Um, so this rice is just a microwave uh, rice bowl. Okay, it's, it's, it's already cooked, it just needs to be heated up. So back to what I said before. All I'm doing here, one second, got to log my chicken. Okay, all I'm doing here 
There's a barcode right on it. I get this stuff at Costco. It's a, like a dollar a bowl. It's a great deal. Um, I hit scan barcode. One bowl, meal two, check mark. Okay, it's logged. All right, so again, I scan the barcode on this white rice. Now, if I bought a box of like, you know, um, raw, dry white rice, minute rice, whatever, right, and I was going to cook like a serving of that, I would. Um, you know, put a bowl on a food scale and pour out the rice into the food scale to the number of grams um, that I wanted for that meal, okay? And then I would boil water and cook it, right? Um, but this stuff is very convenient. Um, it's pre-cooked, it needs to be heated up. I'm not weighing this rice out, okay? I scan the barcode, it says it's 310 calories. I'm trusting uh, that that's, that's close enough and, and fairly accurate. And I'm just doing that. Okay, so this is my carb source. This microwaves in 90 seconds. I'm not going to microwave it yet because that chicken has to cook in an air fryer. So I'll just start that with about two minutes left to go on my chicken. Okay, so we got the we got the protein source. We got the carb source. Um, now. What's the fat source? As I told you before, oftentimes I do not add a direct fat source to my meals. The first meal I did, this one I am not. I'm just gonna get trace dietary fat from uh, the chicken breast and the rice, okay? It's gonna be a pretty low fat meal. I'll go over that in a second. All right, so we got all three macro sources figured out and now it's what am I gonna season it with? Um, how am I gonna, gonna you know, flavor this? what sauce or condiment am I going to use? Okay, so I'm going to use, I have a carne, I have a, about 50 seasonings in there. You should too, all right? Um, carne asada seasoning, I'm just going to sprinkle this. Healthy amount on there. On my chicken, I'm air frying it. Because this is really thin chicken, it shouldn't take any more than about 10 minutes to cook. Okay, that's it. Um, and then once my chicken's done and my rice is done, I'm just gonna put it into a bowl and then how am I gonna jazz it up? How am I gonna, gonna add flavor to the meal? This is where you get your variety and where you prevent the I'm bored with my food thing. It's through spices and rubs and uh, low and no calorie condiments and sauces. So I'm just using gonna use this uh, Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce. There's no calories in this, so I don't have to quantify it or track it. Uh, I'm gonna basically gonna have a buffalo chicken and rice bowl. All right, so this whole meal, uh, 550 calories, 51 grams of protein for the day. Um, between meal one and two thus far, I am at 1,058 calories. Uh, and just over 100, about 105 grams of protein. Okay, so I'm right on track for where I want to be. I told you my calorie limit right now in my fat loss phase is about 2,000 a day. I try to divide that 2,000 calories up evenly over four meals. I could have done it over three meals and had three 700 calorie meals. I like to do four. Um, right now my protein, like I said, is about 105 grams. So I'm about halfway there. So I got about 1,000 calories left. Uh, I got, a, a, you know, about... 110, 120 grams of protein uh, left to make up here, which I will easily do in meals three and four. I'll show you that uh, when we get there. So, so far, so good. Guys, I, again, I, I want to reiterate, and this was covered in the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 PDFs and slide decks. Build your diet around about eight to 10 total foods. And from those eight to 10 total foods, you're going to create a handful of go-to meals that you put on repeat that are fairly uniform. What you see me eating in these four meals on this video, very, very similar foods every week, okay? And very, very similar meals every week. What you see me eating today in this video, you would see me for the most part eat next week. Now, I will sub things in and out. If I get sick of a certain protein source, I'll bring in a new one. If I get sick of chicken, 
maybe I bring in lean ground beef. Um, if I get sick of white rice, um, which I rarely do, but if I did, you know, I might go to couscous next week, okay? But by and large, I'm eating about the same 8, 10, 12 foods every week, and I, and I you know, the same five, six, seven meals every week. I mean, because it's, it's repeatable. None of the meals you're going to see me make here are going to take more than about 15 minutes to make. Um, usually they're going to be more like five or 10 minutes to make. The only reason this one's going to take about 15 minutes is because you, you have to cook raw protein, right? There's no getting around that. Um, if I had pre-cooked chicken or pre-cooked beef, which I do, and I'm going to use that in, in another meal here on the video, uh, it would probably take, it would, would take me far less. I'd be at that five to 10 minute mark to make a meal. All right, if it's taking you more than 10 to 20 minutes to design, track, and prepare a healthy meal, you're seriously overcomplicating this process. Okay, it absolutely shouldn't. It should, this does not need to, to be a time drain on you. All right, and again, the more you do this and practice it, the less tedious it gets. All right, you, you, you might have five, maybe 10 minutes a day involved in actually tracking your food and measuring your food, it, maybe, maybe 10 minutes, probably more like five. Um, and then obviously, you know, the time it takes to actually let the meal cook. Uh, but again, that shouldn't take more than 10 to 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, I mean, what you see me doing here is what I do every week. I, I keep a very low variety diet in terms of my foundational base foods. I have, you know, five, six, seven go-to meals. I have like two options for breakfast that I usually eat. Um, and then I have like, you know, three or four lunch slash dinner options because lunch and dinner meals are kind of interchangeable. And sometimes I eat lunch and dinner meals for breakfast. So again, eight to, eight to 12 total foods for me a handful of go-to meals, a couple for breakfast options and a couple of uh, lunch and dinner options that are formed from those foundational foods. It, it's, it's really that easy. And again, you're going to get the variety in, in your meals through the use of sauces and condiments, preferably low or no calorie, um, and then spices, rubs, and seasonings. I mean, I, I can make this same meal I'm making here, chicken and rice. 50 different ways because I got about 50 different seasonings. I got probably 20 different types of sauces and condiments. I, I, you know, I have unlimited variety with the same base meal. All right, so that's meal two. We got two down. We got two meals to go. Uh, and I'll be back here shortly to take you through meal three. Okay, back for meal three. Um, so once again, we're going to go through the same, exact same process. Um, I have about a thousand calories left in my budget today. Uh, I need to get about 100 grams more protein for the day. So I have two meals left. This is meal three. Uh, we're going to start, same thing. What's my protein source for the meal? In this case, I'm going back to chicken, but instead of um, using raw chicken breast and having to, having to cook it, I'm going to go to these pre-cooked uh, little chicken bites that I get from Costco. They come in these little pouches. Uh, very, very handy. Um, not bad tasting, not the best chicken you're ever gonna have, but again, I'm all about convenience, right? Um, so, this is real easy. Um, all you're gonna do, all I'm gonna do here is uh, scan the barcode, open my fitness pal, go to meal three, and bring the barcode scanner up. And good, okay, and I'm gonna have two of these, so it, it came right up, um, fresh edition chicken bites, all right? So I'm gonna change it uh, to two pouches and that's logged in. So my protein's taken care of. All I'm gonna do with these things, again, these are pre-cooked as I told you in the, in the, last, in the last meal. Food labels um, reflect the state of the food that you bought it in. So these are pre-cooked, so the nutrition label is for cooked uh, chicken, right? It's that easy. So my air fryer is um, on the food scale. Okay, we're gonna dump these in. I can get it 
open. Okay, so that's a uh, 194 grams of chicken. Um, I'm curious to see. So yeah, a pouch says it's 91 grams. Um, I did two of those. That would be 182 grams. So this is actually a little bit more. This is why, this is, as you can see, this is why using a food, sc food scale is always a little bit more accurate. Uh, not a big deal. Or it's not a lot of calories extra, but I'm going to go ahead and adjust it anyway. So I'm going to change it from two pouches uh, and actually do the gram amount. So I'm at 195. I'll just go into my fitness pal. I'll change the serving size from pouch to gram. Again, normally I would not do this, okay? But I, I had a food scale set up and, and my air fryer uh, tray on it. I actually didn't even mean to measure this, but here we go, now I'm measuring it. Uh, so I'm gonna go to 195, yep. Okay, Base very close to the same calories as if I just let it go and, and remained as pouches, right? So anyway, that's my protein source for the meal, real easy. Um, I'm going to season that up with something in a second. I'll take you through that. Once again, we move to the carb. What's my carb source for this meal? In this case, I'm going to make like barbecue chicken wraps. Okay, so I showed you these before. These are great. Um, this brand is La Banderita uh, Carb Counter Tortillas. Very, very high fiber, very low calorie. So again, I'm always after high volume, low energy, dense foods, okay? This is a prime example of that, all right? These tortillas are 70 calories a piece, uh, 11 grams of fiber per, per tortilla, and a decent amount of protein at four grams. So, but I'm considering this a carbohydrate source, okay? So, all we're gonna do here, once again, just gonna scan the barcode. Meal three, barcode scanner. It comes right up, easy peasy. I'll change the amount to two. Two, hit check mark. Okay, and it's logged, all right? So, easy enough. Um, I'm going to season this up. with some um, poultry seasoning. It's called special shit. My mom gets it for me every year for Christmas. Good stuff. Um, so again, we have, what's the protein? It's the chicken bites, okay? Weighed, measured, quantified, tracked. What's my carb source? The tortillas, tracked, quantified, all right? Um, fat source, I'm not doing a direct fat source in this meal. So, you know, I, I, I told you before, sometimes I will have a direct fat source in the meal, sometimes I won't, and I'll just get trace uh, dietary fat uh, from the protein and the carbs, okay? Uh, and in this case, I can tell you I'm gonna get very, very little fat here, uh, under 10 grams, so nine and a half grams of fat, just from the trace fats and the carbs and the protein, right? So I'll season this up. actually unopened actually I think I have one open I do so we're just gonna season the chicken up because these are pre-cooked they don't take very long to heat up I'll probably I'll throw them in for like four to five minutes just to get them a little hot and crispy is really exciting watching me cook food but guys I think it's important to see how this stuff is actually done in real life okay I know this, these videos are probably boring for you but I think they're very helpful and tactical and practical because you have to learn again you need to learn the tactics and the skills and the habits and see how things are done versus me just telling you what to do okay I have to show you how to do it okay for you to learn so you gotta bear with me all right so in summary, again, 
what's my protein? We always start with that, okay? I had that fig got that figured out, it's my chicken bites. What's my carb source for the meal? Got that figured out, my tortillas. What's my fat source for the meal? This meal, I'm not gonna have one, okay? Um, what am I gonna season uh, the meal with? I use that chicken seasoning, okay? And then what uh, spice, or I'm sorry, what low and no calorie condiment and, or add on am I gonna use to flavor it up even more? I'm making barbecue chicken wraps, so I going to use some very low sugar, low calorie um, barbecue sauce. This stuff is great. Anything from this company, G. Hughes, is awesome. They make all types of sauces and marinades. They're all low sugar. They're all low calorie. Okay. So I'm just going to use about 40 grams of this. Again, just going to scan the barcode. Meal three. Comes right up. Uh, I'm going to change the amount to serving size to grams, and then I'm just going to type in 40. I'm going to hit the check mark, and it's logged in. Okay, so this is a mere 13 calories of barbecue sauce, but it's just enough to put a little bit on each um, uh, chicken wrap. Okay, so that's again same process. What's my protein? What's my carb? What's my fat? There isn't a fat in this case. What am I going to season the meal with? What low or no calorie sauce or add on, add on am I going to use to make it a little bit more flavorful okay so this entire meal um, 426 calories uh, 55 grams of protein and um, nine and a half grams of fat okay so perfect so I'm right at about 1500 calories right now um, right there 1487 uh, my protein's right about 100 and 150 grams, so I, I'm right on track. I'm sorry, my, my protein's at about 160 grams right now. So I, I'm right on track for um, hitting my marks today, okay? I'll be back with meal four. I'm not gonna show you how to make a grilled chicken wrap, okay? It's gonna cook. I'm gonna put a, half the chicken in one tortilla, half the chicken in the other. I'm going to put the tortilla with the chicken on it on a food scale it'll be on a plate obviously okay so I'll just get the chicken out put half of it on that tortilla I'll zero out the food scale and I'll sprinkle 20 grams of barbecue sauce on the tort on the on the wrap then I'll do the exact same thing with the other tortilla add the other half of the chicken add 20 more grams of this okay it's that easy all right so I'll be back with meal four shortly hang it Okay, this is it. Um, this is meal four. Bear with me. Uh, come to the end of the day here. So this is my last meal of the day. Um, same process as I've been showing you guys in the other three meals. All right. Uh, this is a typical final meal for me for the day. I'd say five out of seven days per week I'm having some, some variety of what I'm going to show you here. This is just a, um, a protein yogurt. Okay. Um, so... We're going to start with this, the exact same thing. What is my protein source for this meal? We always get that straightened out first. Get that in the right amount. Okay. So in this case, there's two, there's two protein sources. This is going to be a really high protein meal. All right. So first of all, to make this, I'm going to put a bowl on the food scale. All right. And then I'm going to add protein powder after I scan the barcode. Truth be told, this is already in my MyFitnessPal. It, it would come right up if I just typed in the name of it, but I want to show you how to scan a barcode. Um, so, barcode's here. We go to meal four, barcode scanner. Boom, protein, vanilla bean. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is change the amount. I'm going to do 45 grams, um, which is going to give me about 166 calories with a protein powder. So I literally just take the scooper, the bowl's already on the food scale, the scale is zeroed out, and I'm just gonna start adding protein powder. All right, so that's 17. 37. 45, okay. 
Got that set. Now, I am just going to use, and I showed you these earlier, I'm just going to use these uh, individual containers of Greek yogurt. I'm going to use two of them. Uh, these are 150 grams a piece. Um, I'm actually, I'm not going to, I'm not going to measure this out. I told you before, stuff like this, I just scan the barcode on and trust that it's accurate enough. If I was using, like I said earlier, if I was using a, a larger container of Greek yogurt and scooping it out, I definitely would measure that out on the food scale, but I'm just trusting that these are going to be 150 grams. They're probably going to be less because it's kind of impossible to get every bit of Greek yogurt out of these, but whatever, it's close enough. So. Throw that on top of the protein powder. Try to get as much as I can out of here. Okay, same thing with this one. Okay, and then I'm just going to mix all this up. Take a little bit to mix. I want to get all the clumps out of it. And it kind of like makes like an icing. It's pretty good. So I use like this berry Oikos Triple Zero. So this is going to be kind of like a berry icing. Okay, cool. Now, as I said, I got to log these. So barcode on there it is so we're just gonna scan boom comes right up Oikos triple zero uh, berry I'm going to change the amounts to two containers perfect 180 calories and got my protein sorted out okay um, now we're going to move to carb. What's my carb for the meal? All right. I'm going to weigh, measure, quantify this as well. Track it. Weigh, or weigh, measure, quantify, weigh slash measure, measure slash quantify, however you want to say it and track it in my fitness pal. Okay. Same thing for every food. In this case, I'm going to do some fruit. All right. And as I told you, as I told you earlier, my diet, and I would encourage you to do the exact same thing, build it around about eight to 12 total foods, you know, four sources of, four dominant sources of protein, you know, four dominant sources of carb, maybe two uh, sources of dietary fat. So like for me, my carbohydrate sources hardly ever change. It's always, you know, that white rice, usually the microwave uh, rice bowls, um, the, the, the low calorie high fiber bread, the low calorie, high fiber wraps, and then usually some fruit. And I, I vary the fruit, you know, sometimes week to week. Usually grapefruit, strawberries, apples. Those are kind of my go-tos. This time I'm doing grape, grape, grapefruit. So, same thing. I, I've already, I, I spared you having to watch me peel a grapefruit. So I've already peeled my grapefruit, um, you know, took the, um, peeled it, cut it and peeled it, and I'm going to measure it out, okay? So I have it sitting here. We're going to um, zero out the food scale. I got my grapefruit pieces right here. Okay, that's 193 grams of grapefruit. So I'm just going to get in my fitness pal. Search for grapefruit. It comes right up. Okay, gonna change the gram amount to 193, meal four, check, and it's logged, okay? Um, so this meal ends up being uh, 393 calories, 62.8 uh, grams of protein. This is, this is, this protein yogurt if you struggle to get your protein in, if you just make this for one meal a day, like, you 
and that's what it looks like. You're gonna you're gonna have a much much easier time hitting your protein goals if you just make this stuff one of your meals per day. Okay, so yeah, 393 calories, 63 grams of protein, and that's my day. All right, and again, my targets for the day. These are not your targets. These are my targets. I'm going to give you your targets. Uh, my targets for the day was right around 2,000 calories, and I was hoping to get at least 220 grams of protein. So we'll see, you know, how I did here. My calories right now are 1877, so I could technically eat a little bit more today, um, but I'm not going to because I'm, I'm actually very satiated due to all the protein and the fiber. Uh, my macronutrient break breakdown, 223 grams of protein, so I hit my protein goal. Because I prioritized the protein in every meal first and I got it straightened out in the right amount. Uh, carbs, 214. I like that. That's about one gram per pound of my current body weight in, in a fat loss phase like this. I think that's a perfect amount of carbs. Uh, my fat intake, very low. Okay, and I told you earlier, high protein, high fiber, um, moderate carb, and low fat is the way to go if you want to lose body fat. Okay, my fat intake today is 39 grams. All right. So, that's the day, guys. It's really that easy. And as you can see, none of these meals were like some big, monumental, time-consuming thing. Keep it basic. So, again, to review. All right, number one, all we are worrying about here, number one is calorie intake, not going over the calorie threshold that I set for you. Secondarily, very important, is hitting your protein intake within a range. I will give you that range as well, custom to you. Okay, we're building our diet around eight, 10, 12 total foods, four-ish sources of protein, four-ish sources of carbs, maybe two sources of dietary fat. Um, you know, Try to keep those pretty consistent. You can sub things in or out as you see fit, but I also wouldn't be trying to reinvent the wheel every week and switching out all your food sources, okay? Um, again, we wanna keep this as simple, repeatable as possible and as, as low stress, low decision fatigue as possible, all right? So eight, 10, 12 total foods, foundational foods from those foundational foods, you're going to create a handful of go-to meals, like I said earlier. Maybe two breakfast options that you can put on autopilot, three to four lunch slash dinner options that you can, you know, you can interchange lunch and dinner meals, okay? That's really it. And then accurate quantitative nutrition tracking. using a food scale, weighing stuff out in uh, grams and ounces, not using volume measurements like cups and tablespoons unless you're forced to, not using subjective measurements like, this is a good example, instead of pulling a grapefruit out um, of the package in my refrigerator and just saying, oh, that looks like a large grapefruit, okay, now I peeled it and got precise and weighed it out, okay, because Medium apple, large banana, okay? Your idea of a medium apple is probably more like an extra large apple. So if you search for medium apple um, and it's an extra large apple, which it probably is, you're gonna be taking more calories than you think. So it's dotting your I's and crossing your T's and being as pre precise and as quantitative with this stuff as you can be. I told you, you don't have to weigh and measure everything. I gave you a lot of examples of that. You know, certain things you can just scan a barcode on and just trust that it's, it's, it's close enough, right? But certain, some things you absolutely do need to weigh and measure. Uh, and the more often that you can weigh and measure anything, it's gonna be more precise, right? And you're gonna get, you're gonna get uh, better, uh, more consistent results that way versus estimating and guesstimating. Because guys, people say, oh yeah, I, I count calories. Okay, if you're counting calories without using a nutrition tracking app and a digital food scale, Okay, you're not scanning barcodes, you're not putting stuff on a food scale, you're not weighing and, and you know, you're not tracking and, and measuring in, in grams and ounces. You aren't calorie counting, you are calorie guessing. You're guessing, you're estimating at best. Okay, and no one ever guessed their way to 
consistent, optimal progress with this stuff. Really with anything in life, but particularly with this stuff. What gets measured gets managed, all right? So that's really the whole process. So between the Fat Loss Nutrition 101 uh, PDFs and slide decks and uh, this video uh, on how to um, uh, structure your meals, how to uh, track your nutrition, how to quantify your food, you should be all set to go um, and you'll be getting uh, your nutrition plan and the parameters here uh, shortly uh, in the next couple days or your next two days or so and you'll be ready to roll because now you have this you have this 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 foundation of education to where when I tell you what to do you'll also know how to do what you need to do and that's the missing piece is that most people just want to be told what to do and not to think about it that's not how this stuff works you're gonna to have to learn how to do it and you are gonna to have to think about it but the more it's like any other skill set the more you practice doing this stuff there's less friction okay it's it's a lot less tedious it's less time-consuming but there is a learning curve with this stuff but that's what you have me for as a coach okay if, if you can just get your feet wet with this start gaining some traction fail forward I'm telling you, within a month of doing this stuff, you're going to be like, okay, I got it. And then it, then it just becomes kind of, you're like on autopilot. So uh, that's it. Hope all this was helpful. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.